Here is an example of a killer Sudoku puzzle. You will note that as in regular Sudoku, we have nine rows, nine columns, and nine blocks, each of which must contain the numbers from one to nine. But in addition, in a killer Sudoku, all the cells are also divided into what are called cages, designated by these dotted lines. And for each cage, for example this one over here, we note that it has three cells, and the total of those three cells must equal that number in the top left corner, in this case 15. The only other rule in Killer Sudoku is that all the cells in each cage must be unique. You may also notice that in a Killer Sudoku puzzle, we do not start with any cells that have a value or a given or fixed cells, and so we can have to employ some other strategies to get the solving going. Okay, let's start solving this puzzle. A very useful place to start is what is called the rule of 45. This simply means that every row, every column, and every block must total 45, because each row, column, and block contains the digits 1 to 9, those add up to 45. So let us look at this second block here. We'll note that we have this cage, that cage, and that cage totally enclosed within that block. And as you will see, those three cages add up to 10 plus 11 plus 15, which is 21, 36. Therefore, this cell must be 45 minus 36, and so we know it must be a 9. Now this cage here only contains two cells and totals 10, therefore this cell must be a 1. Let's now look at this first block where we have another example of the rule of 45, albeit a slightly different pattern. If we look at this cage, plus that cage, plus that cage, we see they are totally enclosed in the first block and add up to 32. Therefore, these two cells here must equal 13. But because this cage totals 16, this cell here must be a 3. Here is another example. If we look at the first column, we see that this cage, and this cage, and this cage total 35. Therefore, these two cells must total 10. But because this cage totals 16, it means this cell must be a 6. Another useful place to look is for those cages that can only have one combination of numbers. So if we look at this cage here, which totals 4, it can only be a 3 and a 1. So either this cell is a 3 and that cell is a 1, or that cell is a 3 and that cell is the 1. But if we look in this column, we see there already is a 3, therefore that cell must be a 1. And this one, of course, is a 3. Let's now look at these two unknown cells in this cage. We know that they total 10, um, but what are the combinations of two cells that make up 10? Fortunately, in this version of Killer Sudoku, we have a nice handy calculator where we can enter the number of unknown cells in the total to see the combinations. So in this case, we know that those two cells are either a 1 and a 9, 2, 8, 3, 7, or 4, 6. But of course, they can't be 1, 9 because there's already a 1 in that block. They can't be 3, 7 because there's also a 3 in that block. And they can't be 4, 6 because of the 6 in the block. Therefore, the only valid combination is 2 and 8. So let us pencil those two values into those cells. Let's now look at this cell. The total for the cage is 5, 
So the cell could be the combination 1 plus 4 or the combination 2 plus 3. Now of the 1-4 combination, it can't be a 1 because there's a 1 there, but it could be a 4. And of the 2-3 combination, it can't be a 3 because that's in the block, so therefore it could be a 2. Now look at these two cells, what's called a naked pair. One of the cells is a 2 and one is an 8, but the 2 definitely goes into one of those two cells in that block. Therefore this cell cannot have a 2. So we know that this cell now must in fact be a 4. And as this cell is a 4, this cell must then obviously be a 1. Well, I hope this has given you some idea as to how to go about solving a killer Sudoku puzzle. No doubt these puzzles are much more challenging than regular Sudoku, but they're really fun. Give it a go.